Hello, and welcome to What's the Big Idea? I'm your host, Michelle Tuck Ponder. Today's episode is brought to you by Destination Imagination, commonly referred to as DI, the leading creative problem-solving experience for children. Through DI's innovative, project-based educational experiences, participants gain the skills that will set them up for success in careers like the one we're going to hear about today. Learn more about DI at DestinationImagination.org. On today's episode, we are pleased to welcome Antoine Thompson. Antoine Thompson is the executive director of JLT Fieldhouse, a nonprofit coaching and mentoring organization. JLT Fieldhouse offers one-on-one and team-oriented basketball training, as well as lessons in leadership, teamwork, goal setting, and overcoming obstacles. He is also the owner of Coach T's Corner, an online mentoring academy designed to educate, support, and inspire the next generation of leaders. The Coach T's Corner miniseries is now streaming on Roku and Amazon Fire. Antoine's podcast, Developing Tomorrow's Leaders, is available wherever you get your podcasts. Joining us today from Salisbury, North Carolina, please welcome Antoine Thompson. Hello and welcome to What's the Big Idea? Thank you, Michelle. It's a pleasure to be here. and I appreciate the opportunity to come on and speak about our similar um, interests and passions, which is our young people. Well, I'm excited to talk to you because I am the parent of two basketball kids. My oh. daughter played varsity basketball in high school and my son plays basketball. He's just on the freshman team um, at his high school, same high school. And we also did AAU and my husband is a basketball fanatic. And in fact, I had to fight him to keep him from conducting the interviews. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But he is a huge fan exactly because I think probably for some of the same reasons that you are so involved, because our kids have learned amazing lessons from the game of basketball and participating in team sports. Oh, absolutely. And it's great said way you're talking about your husband, my claim to fame and he might appreciate this. Actually, when I was coaching AAU, I coached against Allen Iverson when he was uh, 14 years old. (laughs) And um, I knew then that he was going to be a phenomenal player because he was just uh, not absolutely phenomenal player. But you're absolutely right. What I do, I'm, I've actually entered my 10th year coaching at a private school. And mm-hmm. what's transpired is the kids that I've been coaching these 10 years have been part of my nonprofit as well. And to see the results, uh, not just from the athletic component, but also in the life skills component yeah. has been absolutely amazing. And uh, hopefully I'll get an opportunity to share a couple of stories because there are a couple that really highlight the great abilities and the passion that kids have if they're just given the opportunity to shine, showcase and, and show what they're capable of doing. No, I, I, 100%. And, and we are, and that's so funny. You talk about Alan Iverson. I just saw a clip of him um, talking to uh, another star basketball player. Um, again, I'm not a, I'm not the basketball follower, but he was saying that Alan Iverson inspired him to play basketball. And, and we know that players, um, LeBron James and um, Steph Curry and all those guys inspire so many people in so many different ways. But what I'm always impressed with is how hard these gentlemen work at their craft. And and so it and it's not just, wow, I can shoot a three or I'm a great defender. It's a lot about communication, collaboration, critical thinking and creativity because basketball is a team sport. So can you talk a little bit about these four skills and how you use them in in the work you're doing now? Oh, absolutely. The the, uh, the example I was going to share with you is probably is perfect for, for this situation. Oh, I believe in putting kids in position to be successful. And the way to put them in position to be successful is to allow them to make decisions right, wrong or indifferent because they learn from those uh, experiences. And we had a situation this year where we had uh, a player that broke a team rule and our team motto was team before self. And we 
uh, had the kid that broke the team rule. And I found out about it because two of the eighth graders came to me the next day and said, hey, coach, uh, so-and-so broke team rule. And I said, well, what do you think we should do about it? And without hesitation, these two players said, make him sit in the bleachers and watch us run. I said, sit in the bleachers wow. and watch you run. And I'm like, and I thought just like that, I'm like, wow. And I'm like, you know what? I like that so much. I want to let that be my punishment for him. And then if you guys want to impose any other disciplinary actions, I'll let you do that as a team and you decide upon yourselves, amongst yourselves. So the young man sits in the bleachers, he watches the kids run. And I will be honest with you, I made those kids run. I made them, I wanted him to make sure he understood the you know, consequences of his actions. Afterwards, they had a little team meeting. And they came out of the locker room and they said, Coach, we've had a meeting, we voted on it, and we talked and decided that for the next game, this young man will not dress or participate in the next game. So they valued responsibility and accountability, not for themselves, but for their teammates. And that carries from what we do from day to day in, in our practices and in our games, but it allows them to make decisions that impact each other and to learn from those. And it, and it allowed them to understand that they have a voice and them having a voice makes all the difference in the world because they're going to be willing to make, take more chances and then to be given those opportunities to make those uh, decisions that could be life changing for them. So when you, and, and that, that is a great story because they were willing to do the work to demonstrate, straight the lesson they didn't they weren't Absolutely. punitive on him they were they were took it upon themselves to model what what the not necessarily the behavior but but sort of the consequences of his behavior and how that impacted the team absolutely absolutely <laughs> it, it, go ahead i'm sorry no, I was just going to ask you that now when you take that example, how do you think those 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 skills or that experience is going to impact your players when they go out into the work world? You are like you like to set me up for great story. I'm going I'm to be a great storyteller <laughs> if, you, if I can bring you along with me because you give me some great uh, questions and I can tell you the stories. So example of how we do this goes all the way back to when I started coaching in, I started coaching in 1985, but about three months ago, I got a message from another former player who is now currently a high school coach. He had been contacted by another former player that I coached in 1990, and he was trying to get back in touch with me because his son was having, his teenage son was having some issues with his coach. And he wanted to reach back out to me because of the impact I had on his life when he was a freshman in high school in 1990. So we ended up having a Zoom call and he just wanted to express his appreciation for the lessons that I taught him then and how they impact his life. And then, you know, 30 some years later, he's repeating things that I said to him, um, you know, from years ago. So to answer your question, those experiences can transcend their lives. And when they find out that somebody cares just as much about them as their immediate families, then it allows them to open up, share and build relationships, foster relationships that last a lifetime. And that is something that they can pass, uh, pay forward to other people that come into their lives. <laughs> Do you think that um, those, those skills that you learn from 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 playing on a team, especially in sports, um, when you when you go into the workplace and, and you know this is that not everybody carries their weight all the time? Um, how do you think that your the players that you coach when you have a a player or there's a teammate on the team who whether they can't or won't? Um, contribute equally to the effort. What kind of skills do you work with your players in order to um, help that either help that player come up to speed or to be able to cover the laps where that that player or that teammate is is not stepping up? The best way to do that, uh, the way that I do it, is always put the kids in a position they can see both sides. <laughs> like uh, the use example you're talking about, a like kid is just really not really acclimated to what we're trying to focus on in the team concept. Uh, the example I can give you there is what we do with our teams is we focus on pass first, dribble second. Well, if you watch a lot of basketball, what does everybody do? Dribble first, pass second. 
is all about dribble, dribble, dribble. Well, the less you dribble, the more you score. That's And the proof is in the pudding. And that's what we've been able to do successfully year after year. So having a player that likes to dribble first, pass second, well, you put him in position, let him see the results that come out of him being able to shift his mindset and go, hey, oh, I can do that. Oh, I, I, that is possible. It is easier. And when they realize that they don't have to be a central and focused focal part of the offense because they have the ball, then they understand that, hey, when I don't have the ball, my scoring opportunity actually goes up, not down. Because when you have the ball, everybody's focused on you. And nobody ever looks at the guys that, are not, that don't have the ball. So what we teach is constant movement is, is without the ball creates your scoring opportunities. And a player, and we've had players like that. And once they see that, they're like, oh, okay. They start sharing the ball. They see the results. Then they start te- playing team basketball. Then their teammates start playing hard because now they know they're actually going to get the ball from this player. And he's just not going to stand there and dribble all the time. And that creates a cohesive team that that focuses on the common goal of being successful and ultimately winning more games. Coach, I wish you were in my town because my son played and my daughter both played with kids who shot first, dribbled second, and passed third. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, geez. Those are the kind of programs I love to go into, boy. I, I would love to come in and shift that mindset, mm-hmm. for sure. <laughs> now, I'll, I will throw this in, so just so you understand, when I say that we, uh, the kids have been in the program, our nonprofit program, JLT Fieldhouse, and then carried over to the school where I'm coaching, I actually run the program through out of the school. We've been to seven consecutive championship games. We've won five and had three undefeated seasons in the last seven years. And all of that applying what I just shared with you about the team basketball. It's, you know, it's uh, dribble, uh, dribble less, pass more and play team basketball. Is that simple? (laughs) Simplicity is the key and simplicity is the key to it. Keep it simple so that it doesn't confuse kids and give them too many directions because I think a lot of coaches and and I'm just speaking in general terms, a lot of coaches focus so much on what's going on in the NBA and what's going on in college mm-hmm. that they sit in front of their computers and they're watching all these videos. I want to implement this off, this play, this play, that play. We focus on principles, simplifying the process so the kids get the opportunity to think for themselves and make decisions in a split moment. In a, in a split moment. And it has created some great results for us. So can you talk a little bit more about your C's of success courses and how that's the foundation of your training? And first of all, what does C stand for? Oh, yes. So C is an acronym and it stands for simplicity, effort and attitude. Um, Regardless of what kids do in their lives, even us as adults, there there are three components, I think, that are key to being successful. You know, we we all have complicated things going on in our lives, but to keep things simple. Um, And secondly, the effort part is about applying maximum effort no matter what it is you do, because the harder you work, the better results you get. And the attitude to me is the most important one, because even though you're trying to to make difficult situations simple and you're trying to force yourself to work harder, keeping a positive attitude will always keep those other two in alignment. And when I'm coaching, that's where to start with. Keep it simple. So we focus on concepts and then effort. I I expect nothing less than 100 100 percent effort. And then the results are in that. And then the attitude is not only about your attitude, but your attitude towards the people that you communicate with and interact with on a day to day basis. And how that carries from basketball to the courses is they focus on the key uh, soft skill areas that schools actually don't focus on anymore. The kids are not learning in school. Um, number one, hey, how do they communicate with adults? Not just adults, adults with you're talking about coaches and other authority figures with teachers, with employers. And they they use a lot of slang, which is inappropriate. Then there's goal settings. A lot of kids don't set goals themselves because they don't know how to set short term goals. They don't know how to set long term goals. Um, a lot of them think that they are followers and not leaders. And in reality, they're all leaders, but they haven't realized that they're leaders because they're following. They're too busy following other people. Um, we focus on the social media impact, the positive and negative uh, impacts of social media. You know, we have so many kids that they go, hey, I have like 15,000 followers or friends. Now you have 
15,000 people that just click like. You don't know them. You know nothing about them. So if I were to reach out to them and ask them to tell me what your favorite food or your favorite color was or who your best friend was, they couldn't answer any of those questions. So there's this false sense of, of connection with virtual friends as opposed to putting forth the effort to have face-to-face communication with people. And then the uh, social media impact of it is uh, kids would rather text than talk. And that in itself does not allow them to build relationships because I know if, if I were to text you certain words, how you interpret those would determine how you reply. And I think that's one of the things that a lot of kids have issues with. And one of the ones, one of the course to have is a free one. How to, how to uh, get to know your parents better. It creates this, uh, uh, it's basically a course. Basically, it's a questionnaire. It's just asking questions that generates answers from your parents and shows interest. And then one question leads to a conversation. A conversation builds a relationship and relationships between kids and their parents are very stressed these days. And, and any way we can help with that, this is one of the reasons we have these courses. That that sounds that sounds absolutely amazing. I'm I'm also interested in hearing more about developing tomorrow's leaders with Coach T, which is your new podcast, <laughs> and and love to hear more about what advice you have for students who want to take on leadership roles at school or in their communities. Yes, so developing tomorrow's leaders was uh, something I've been thinking about starting a podcast like a year ago. I'm like, ah, I don't know. I don't think I want to do it. But then I realized that it had the ability to impact not only kids, but all those that are that have an impact. If, um, we're talking with adults, uh, educators, parents, business owners, counselors, and community leaders all have the ability to positively impact kids. So why not create a platform where all those people can come together and have an impact? Um, I'm actually an advisor for um, a group of uh, middle schoolers every Wednesday. And I challenged him. I said, I started this podcast and I want you to, to have a voice and to be a part of it. And they're, they're all, they're all, their eyes all lit up. And I said, one of the first things you can do is provide me some things that you know you could use help with. What are some of the struggles that you're having that you think could be helpful? And they just gave me a list of things. And I'm like, this is going to be so great. And the momentum has been phenomenal. I actually have, I think I mentioned about 30 guests already lined up and I just started a week ago. And some of the guests are um, educators, they're business owners, CEOs of uh, nonprofits. Uh, there's a, another uh, young lady that does um, helps high schoolers prepare for college and with their application process with essays and things of that nature, uh, professional athletes, former athletes, um, the list goes on and on. And it's uh, something that I'm truly passionate about. I'm looking forward to continuing. <laughs> what would you tell students who want to take on leadership roles at schools in their communities? What advice would you give them? It's very simple. Step up and be the person that you want to be and not to be influenced, not let people around you influence what you do. I have uh, many kids that have leadership skills. And when I work with them in a one on one uh, session, I find out that they have those. And then it's a way of letting them know that they have it. And then you can tell that their confidence grows and like, oh, my gosh, I can be a leader and not a follower. Uh, The most important thing is to not be deterred or discouraged by what others say. Is probably the biggest thing that I could say, because a lot of kids are uh, negatively impacted by words. Mm -hmm. One question I have for you, you you're so deeply involved with kids. What are you hearing from them about the impact of covid on their lives? It has been tremendously um, impacted in a negative way Mm -hmm. and the first things that they shared with me was the hybrid schooling was the biggest thing that was an issue for them. You know, they were so used to this structure and obviously, you know, with anybody, you, we went to school for 12 years or 16 years, whatever. We got used to that pattern nine months in three months out. And when you break that up in a split of, in a split second, and then you don't know when you're going to see your friends, you don't know when you're going to get to interact and play sports again It just disrupts their lives in so many different ways. And the the other big part was they even said and they admitted teachers really think we're going to sit home in front of a computer for eight hours and do work. There's nobody looking over my shoulder. I'm going to lay in the bed, sleep till 10 or get up and my parents go to work. I'm getting back in the bed, play my video games or go, you know, do whatever. So that was probably the biggest impact. But then the second part was they really felt like 
teachers weren't teaching because of the pandemic, because there was no flow to the day to day teaching process. It was like it was piecemeal together, if you will. So their education is just a little this, a little that. And then they find, oh, hey, I can just go on the Internet and get everything that they're giving me. So they're not really teaching me anything. Those are just a few of the things that they've shared with me. How are you overcoming that? How are you overcoming that that social emotional void that our kids experience? Now you have them back together. It, it's got to be that time lost has got to have some impact on how your players are playing and how the kids are interacting. How are you managing that? <laughs> It's actually not as hard as you think, because now I know from here in Salisbury, you know, we've gotten back to we just really are starting to get our, our nonprofit activity and programming back. Kids can't wait to get back in. You can see it on their faces. They get there early. They they ask if we if I can add something to stay longer. So they're truly missing it and wanting to get back to it. And to me, that's a testament of what's happened over the last two years. And it's not so much about doing anything specific. It's really just about getting back to some sense of normalcy where they're, they can see people, they can go places and just interact with the friends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. We're going to take a, a, a different um, route here now. And so, Coach, you're familiar with those halftime shows that they have where they give someone um, a basketball and they try to make as many free shots as they can possibly make in like 60 seconds. Right. OK, so we're going to do something similar on what's the big idea. And it's called Rapid Fire. And I'm going to okay. ask you questions and I want Gut reaction, one word answer to these questions. Are you ready? I'm always ready. Oh, born ready. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> What's the one thing you wish you learned about more, more about in school? Finances. Oh, really? Question two. What's the first thing you would buy if you won the lottery? My own facility for my nonprofit organization. Ah. Uh-huh. Question three, is a hot dog a sandwich? Good Lord, no. (laughs) (laughs) That's it for the rapid fire round. You did great. You know, it's been delightful talking to you. And I would love to ask if there's anything else that you would like for us to know before we wrap up. Yes, ma'am. So we, you were talking about the Sea of Success. I actually have the Sea of Success blueprint guide available on our website, and it's for parents and teens. And it really just outlines a little bit more about the program and breaks down what each one of those components is all about. And I would definitely encourage people to check that out mm-hmm. from my website, CoachCheeseCorner.com. And it's right there on the home page. You can check that out. But no, I, I'm just really appreciative of the opportunity. Always a excited to talk about uh, helping young people to uh, inspire them to be the best people that they can be. Absolutely. And my one last question, what big ideas excite you now? Big ideas excite me now. Oh, wow. Now, you, now that one stumps me. Now you do rapid fire and I, don't think I go through that. Great. I can't get this one. What big idea? Um, well, honestly, it's the growth of Coach T's Corner and JLC Fieldhouse collectively and the positivity that's been uh, shown over the last month or so. So I'm really excited about where it will lead to uh, next. Well, that that sounds that sounds great to me. And and that is indeed. And what you're doing is really a big idea. And again, as a sports parent, um, I know It can change kids life, not because they're going to the NBA, but but they're going to the the big show, which is the game of life. And having skills that you can learn from being involved in in sports, as so many of our DI kids are also involved in sports, um, is is just phenomenal. And and working together and resolving differences and, and, and coming to conclusions is is invaluable. So we are so glad you're here. Um, with us today. We would like to acknowledge that this episode of what the big what's the big idea was recorded on land originally inhabited and cultivated by the Cherokee, Iroquois, Lenape, Sioux and Shawnee nations. We are grateful for this land and for the people who have stewarded it for generations. This episode was produced by Kelsey Selleck with voiceover material provided by Renee Rainville, 
and Chris Beisel with music by Kevin McLeod. Special thanks to our guest, Antoine Thompson, for joining us today. You can learn more about Coach T by checking out CoachT'sCorner.com or following him on social media. To learn more about our show and about DI, visit us at DestinationImagination.org. If you'd like to inspire even more big ideas for young people around the world, consider making a charitable contribution to DI at DestinationImagination.org slash donate. I'm Michelle Tuck Ponder. Thanks for listening to What's the Big Idea? Are you brand new to Destination Imagination and ready to learn more? Join us for an introductory webinar. These 45-minute information sessions are designed for parents, educators, and volunteers who are ready to learn the basics of DI and how to get started. Sign up to attend a complimentary live session online or download the captioned video on demand. Register today at destinationimagination.org slash the big idea. The U.S. Department of Labor estimates that 65% of today's students will be employed in jobs that have yet to be invented. We have no way of knowing what those jobs will entail. But we do know that the skills that will prepare them for success are the skills that they can develop through destination imagination. Hi, I'm Chris Beisel, Director of Training for Destination Imagination. I was a team manager for 15 years and 22 teams before I joined the staff. Being a team manager was the best thing that I did for all my children. Destination Imagination, or DI, is an international project-based competition that reinforces the four C's, communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. You probably heard about those skills in today's episode and DI is the place where kids like yours develop those skills for themselves. Students work together in small teams to create solutions to a challenge. DI's team challenges fall into one of seven categories, scientific, technical, engineering, fine arts, improvisation, service learning, and for our younger children, early learning. A DI team selects one of those seven challenges and prepares a solution to present at a local tournament. Throughout the experience, students create projects, solve problems, build relationships, learn new concepts, and have a great time in the process. We're building the workforce of the future. Today's DI participants are tomorrow's innovators, problem solvers, and leaders. If that sounds like a good fit for you and the young people in your life, we would love to have you join us. To get started today, visit destinationimagination.org slash learn more.